Hi everybody, my name is Max Maker and this week I'm building a trash train. Actually I built it whole summer. This trash train will move my trash cans from in front of the house all the way back into the garden where they are not visible from the outside. Uh, and I put everything on rails. First they were in this little shed here, uh, which doesn't look very good and it wasn't practical at all. But this area is going to become a small driveway. So these trash cans would be in the way, so I had to move them over to the other side of the building. I've got plenty of space there. Uh, but it's not that easy to reach them back there because it's a grassy area and it's quite narrow. And of course the grass gets wet and muddy, so you really need something like this pavement right here. But that's a lot of manual labor, which I didn't fancy. But I never built a train before, so I thought why not do that? Uh, I like working with steel much more than with bricks. It's <laughs> also lighter and less material that you need. So yeah, th this is the path that I chose and uh, I'm really happy with it. It was a really fun project. And at the end of the day, it's just the best solution. It's much easier, it's easier accessible also to the older folks living in this building. Uh, and maybe it's even a product I might be able to sell one day. So this is kind of the prototype for that. I tried some flame bending, that didn't work. Uh, the tip, it just didn't move enough. So cutting the slots was the way to go. Uh, we concreted these in, but just very slightly, uh, because we also didn't want to seal the driveway because uh, sealing off areas where the water can't drain isn't good, isn't good for the environment. And here in Germany, they're also quite strict about this. So this doesn't seal anything. It uh, keeps the nature intact um, and it still works and it's functional. And you can't see the trash cans, which uh, is also a thing we didn't want. We can't just put them in front of the house. It doesn't look good. So moving them out of the way is the most practical idea. Uh, and this is the hydraulic bender that I bought for making these curves. Um, and that was super helpful because otherwise it, it's difficult to control your bends if you do like with your body weight and some levers. And here are the first two platforms. These are laser cut from one piece of uh, steel and then powder coated. And we moved some concrete um, to make these point foundations and they work really well. Uh, this is the locomotive, at least the ver first version. It's just a windshield wiper motor and some chain drive and it drives these two uh, wheels. So it's two wheel drive. And here are the electronics, it's an Arduino, a motor controller and uh, two potis that uh, change the acceleration, the speed, just for troubleshooting. And then this remote, it's a cheap remote for like 20 euros. And that worked surprisingly ways, uh, well, straight away. Uh, the only issue was that it didn't have enough grip, especially if you add more cans to this. And as I said, we have seven. Uh, not because we produce a lot of trash, it's because of recycling and also because they only get picked up once a month. Um, and here you have the little antenna and actually I found out you have to pull it out to the full length to get good signal. But more on that later because we had some signal problems. The track was done pretty quickly and we uh, added some fime uh, all the way around and there's fime now because this is like, it's like grass but it doesn't grow as tall and you can walk on it uh, and it's good for the environment, better than grass certainly. And the first tests were really promising. It's working. I can see that the cans are staying on there and it's moving along. It's just not going uphill. Here it's going downhill, which is fine, but uphill the train doesn't have enough grip. Uh, and yeah, that's something I just didn't think about, that the train needs to be super heavy. So I need to make some improvements. First of all, this shaft, I find it too small. I'm using a bigger one. This is 15 millimeters now. So I need new bearing blocks. While I'm at it, I'm also exchanging this for a belt drive because this is too noisy in my opinion. And this wheel gives me really nice traction. It works quite well, but I can already feel there's a groove wearing into it. So I'm exchanging it for this piece of solid steel. That's what I'm doing now. Yeah, the section of track that it's riding on is just too thin. It's just six millimeters of uh, steel. Uh, and here I'm adding the shaft to this precision uh, vise. And that way I can make sure that the wheel is on there 90 degrees, perfectly straight. And I just put on with super glue, then I welded it. Uh, and here I'm truing up the surface uh, to make it look nice. Uh, and this mini mill is really struggling with anything you do with it. Um, and now I changed it also to these belt drives. Um, and I added a lot of these scrub screws. And I also made the bar a little bit flat for uh, these grub screws to hold on to the bar. Um, and that worked quite well, but we had some other issues later <laughs> and we changed it again. And this is a new motor, much more powerful than a windshield wiper motor and this awesome gearbox. Uh, this is like from an industrial motor and has a hex key. And the cool thing is uh, it has a 15 to one reduction. So much more power. This is a little key I made for it. I just put a groove in there uh, with the angle grinder and then I super glued a piece of steel in there. And then I'm smoothing it out um, and that fits perfectly into the gearbox. 
And I'm quite happy with that. That worked out much better than I thought. And I'm just using one of these rubber hoses to connect the gearbox to the motor because it's flexible and that way they don't have to be aligned perfectly. This is the shaft before I cut it down for the gearbox itself. Um, and I uh, made it a little bit narrower to fit these uh, belt gears and I welded it on for now. But then I discovered I can also buy them as taper locks, which are much better uh, because you can get them on there perfectly concentrically and they um, get screwed down really tightly and they grip the shaft really well, even without a keyway. So this is the belt drive. It's a dual wheel drive. So with these changes, the drive has more torque, but it also needs more weight to put that torque onto the track. Uh, so I took all the rubbish that I had, put it into box section and welded it up just to create some weights. Uh, because especially when the train is wet, it has very, very little grip. Something that I never had with any other project before. I just didn't think about it. Uh, you need so much weight and that's why these uh, trains weigh like 50 tons or something like that. So this is where we ended up uh, and this is the point where we're going to change things up completely again. Everything that is black is just pure weight, so it's just a lot of steel that we bolted down everywhere. We've got a really nice big motor, got a nice gearbox. Uh, this is going really well. Um, the belt drive has enough uh, yeah, uh, torque to, to twist everything and to turn these wheels. It's just one issue, these wheels, they don't have enough grip. I would need something like polyurethane wheels, but then the polyurethane on this really thin metal, um, they would just rub off and read the brake. You see here that um, black line, that's where the uh, rails are. So polyurethane is just too soft and this is yeah not enough grip. So what do we do? We need a rack and pinion gear. So this motor has to be flipped over 90 degrees. So um, then we can drive it directly on the rack and pinion gear. So this is the third iteration of the train and now the motor is swinging on this arc and that will push the gear into the rack that will be welded to the track. And for that I cut this cutout um, so it has a path to travel and actually move into the track. And I will 3D print the gear and bolt it to this uh, pulley. Uh, these two set screws, they pull the inner part in and out uh, and that way it clamps around the shaft and it's a really good connection. Uh, and I couldn't get a gear with a taper lock, but I can get these pulleys everywhere in Germany. Steel gears are loud and expensive, so I 3D printed mine. It's uh, much cheaper, it's just six euros. Uh, and I can play around with the gear sizes. Right, so this looks quite complicated and it kind of is, but the ultimate thing is that this thing right here pushes this gear down here towards this rail that will be underneath here. And I added this little thing, uh, it's one of these snappers, and I could pull this. Let me do it with both hands. Oh, with one hand. Oh, yeah. Now it's locked. So now we can put it on the rail without this being engaged. Otherwise, we can't get it on there. And once the rail is, uh, the cart is on the rail, we can pull this and it re-engages. Really simple. Still waiting for a belt right here and for a slightly longer shaft because this is not low enough at the moment. And while I'm waiting for the parts, I'm welding on the rack to the track uh, with my cool welder. Uh, and it's really easy, you know, welding stuff on is just so much faster than bolting anything. You don't have to measure a lot. You just put the stick welder in there and, and it will secure it somehow. Uh, I'm, I'm not very good at it, but it, it's easy uh, and it's working. Uh, obviously, the train also needs some cover to keep all of this stuff from rusting too much. So I made this cover. Uh, or I had it made by a steel manufacturer. So that's the fourth iteration and the fourth test run and the rack and pinion gear has so much traction, it's incredible. This works really well and I think this is the way to go. So now that the transmission is working, I can finish all the rest of the stuff. Uh, here on the inside, I put this butyl tape uh, and that dampens the vibrations a lot. Uh, I'm using this on a lot of my projects whenever I use some steel panels like this. Yeah, really good. And to hold this on temporarily, I'm using these Clico pins. Uh, really cool. These are like temporary rivets. Uh, and then I riveted everything on. Of course, with my Jezeeper Firebird Riveter. Uh, th that tool is just amazing. It's so quick, so easy. And I use a lot of rivets nowadays, also for work. And this actually is work uh, because I'm building this, obviously it's a fun project, but I also think it might be a viable product. Uh, so hopefully in the future I can offer this and sell it. I need to make a commercial version obviously. But we have so many older folks in Germany and they really need something to help them with something like this. Not everybody, but some might find this really useful that they don't have to walk as fast and they don't have to bring out the trash cans by, by hand. 
And to power the train, I'm using one of these CAS batteries from Metabo. These are really nice batteries. I really like the system. It's new and um, it has everything built into it. So why build my own battery? The cool thing is they don't just power the cordless drills from Metabo, but also from other companies like Jazipa. They just use the same battery and that's really convenient. This is a rivet setter. So the train runs on batteries and the batteries get charged through these five connectors on the bottom of the housing. This is the other side of the connector. So these are spring loaded. Uh, stainless steel rods, stainless steel springs, uh, these are not stainless steel um, and they push against the connector and they all push in individually so hopefully at the end when the whole thing pushes against them everything will have good contact. This is the battery charger and it has everything built into it so I don't have to modify anything there. I just need to uh, extend these cables to this connector right here. The connector got bolted down to a thick piece of steel on the track that I welded to it and on top I'm adding this roof to keep the rain and some of the rodents out. Um, and that's the charging done, basically. These are the end stops and conveniently they fit perfectly into these slots right here so we can adjust them a little bit. And we'll put, uh, we'll put metal rods into the uh, ground between the tracks, one here and one at this location but on the far end. So that way um, the train knows when it has reached the end. But I soon discovered that that is a problem because when the sensor is driving along it can just jump over the, the metal rod and behind that metal rod it thinks oh I haven't reached the end so I keep going. Uh, so it needs to be somehow latching and uh, needs to be really reliable as well to stop. So instead I'm using a much longer bar and an end switch. Uh, and that longer bar you know it reaches it and then it knows okay I'm still on it and it can slowly deaccelerate and still stay on that end stop. So I'm using these mechanical end stops instead because the inductive ones, they had a clearance of two millimeters. So more than two millimeters and it wouldn't register and less than two millimeters, it would just crash into the end stop uh, rail. This is the end stop rail and has a little ramp at the beginning. I welded on two of these end stop rails. One is for slowing it down and the other one is an actual end stop. The train has some momentum if it's going at full speed, so you need to slow it down first over a longer distance uh, and then it slowly has to keep moving forward until it actually uh, reaches the connectors at the end. So that's what the second end stop is for, or the actual end stop. And that is working really well. It's really a good thing that I had so much space left over underneath the track uh, to hide the gear and also the end stops. Uh, and now it's working really reliably. Um, it keeps going at quite a speed, then it slows down and then at the end it really just creeps forward until it stops completely. The train wouldn't look correct without these lights at the front and it's also good at night to see uh, if it actually has recognized the signal from the remote. I also had to play with these bearings here, these are the guide wheels, to keep it on the track. At first I had them made from steel but now it's plastic and they're far less noisy. Um, also these hose clamps uh, that connect the motor to the gearbox, I had to exchange them for these uh, clamp star clamps. Because the hose clamps you can't just uh, put too much force on them, but here you can really cinch them down uh, and that way it never slips. Quite happy with how this power transmission works now. And after adding the enclosure I didn't have any more signals so I had to put on an external antenna and that solved that issue. But now it's working really reliable and I learned so much in this project. The whole traction issue um, of the wheel slipping, uh, you know the force you need to push along these uh, carts because you think you know something on rails is really easy to push but turns out you still need about 30 kilograms of thrust to push these along. Uh, and that I think for me was uh, the best part of this, you know, learning all these new issues and how to solve them. I think that that will help me in a lot of projects in the future. Um, and it's also a very functional setup at the end of the day because you press the button, you walk outside and a train just magically appears. You also can't see any of the tracks because it just looks like the border of the pavement here. And it's also working really well in the winter and I don't have to snow shovel this area because the train can just move over the snow. So the prototype was a complete success and is functional and hopefully I can build on this in the future to make a commercial version. And I want to thank the Way Out West channel. He's from Ireland and he's building a whole train system on his property and he gave me the inspiration to build my own. Uh, the two setups are very different but they both serve the same goal of moving stuff about. So uh, I really like YouTube for that, that you can learn so much stuff from other people. And I want to thank you for watching and for liking and subscribing my videos. And of course, if you have some thoughts, just leave them in the comments. So well, thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.